I work at the Learning and Skills Improvement Service. A um, couple of minutes on that. We're a Coventry-based organisation formed in October 2008 from the, what was then a combination of the then Quality Improvement Agency and the Centre for Excellence in Leadership. Um, I see later on in the programme my ex-boss uh, in two different organisations, Andrew Thompson, uh, will be joining us on stage. So good to see Andrew again. Uh, we've been working with the New Engineering Foundation now for a couple of years, um, and my, myself particularly. Um, I guess I'm here because of that, and, and in a previous life, um, I spent a few years in an engineering faculty teaching microelectronics, and then later on in computing, and there'll be more on that later, uh, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, but what else is his involvement in engineering, and particularly in the STEM subjects? Well... We aim to be a sector-led organisation. That means doing what the community wants, what the STEM community wants. And we aim to develop capacity in the sector for self-improvement. So what does that mean exactly? Well, that means working with a range of providers across the sector and making things like grant monies available, putting on professional training programmes. I have the pleasure to not only manage the, the ELSIS STEM programme, but the ELSIS uh, Subject Learning Coach programme, for example. Um, everyone here heard of subject learning coaches or got, let's just take a quick show of hands, got subject learning coaches in their organisations? That's quite a, quite a smatter, I'd say maybe two thirds there. Um, you might be interested to know we do things like we issue grants and for those of you who missed the deadline of uh, yesterday for the grant applications for professional development training, if you've got subject learning coaches and you want to put on professional development training, we've extended the deadline for a week because many organisations have been closed this week. So um, there, are, there are grants of between one and £3,000 available on the Excellence Gateway forward slash funding portal, or one word, funding portal, um, and there's an extra week there. So if you want to put on some professional development training um, for subject learning coaches, you can apply for a grant by this time next week. And that's an example of the sorts of thing uh, that we do. Um, following on from the presentations today, a quick reflection of, of, of the world we're in and how we got there before uh, I go on to make the presentations. Um, in 1965, uh, Gordon E. Moore, the co-founder of Intel, um, introduced the concept of Moore's Law. Moore's Law simply stated, says that the number of uh, transistors you can pack into an integrated circuit doubles roughly every two years, maybe 18 months. Um, and that was a prediction which is held true now for, for uh, half a century. What wasn't so easy uh, to predict and wasn't, wasn't so evident at the time is the effect that this ha would have on everyday life because this isn't just about computers. This is about what's happened to the rate of technological change. And technological change has brought about social change. We all now expect, as we heard before, um, that we are um, going to go on holidays to Africa and that we have to look at our carbon emissions and minimise those. And as... As Moore's law has predicted, the amount of technology has also increased so that the rate of, uh, and pace of change has got ever faster. Um, talking about predictions, this wasn't one from, I think, from uh, tomorrow's world, but um, remember the, the prediction back um, in the 50s that as computers were invented, we'd all have greater leisure time? <laughs> Didn't quite happen, did it? Um, we didn't get greater leisure time at all. It, it drove the pace and the anticipation uh, on. And as the pace of um, technological change, this has impacted on every area of engineering that you can think of. Demand for stronger and lighter materials, more economic processes, and, and basically the premise is, is that everything has to be better, stronger, faster, cheaper, more sustainable, uh, and with little or no environmental impact. Um, no pressure up for the engineers out there. Okay. Um, so it means that it's ever increasingly important that we look at the agendas of dual professionalism. That means engineers being both professional engineers and professional teachers. And the programmes that ELSIS runs, the STEM programme and the Subject Learning Coach programme, have that, that in mind. Um, and ELSIS is also particularly keen to support initiatives where we can help <coughs> facilitate knowledge transfer um, and we've been working with NEF using the, uh, the, K the K10s um, to actually promote uh, knowledge transfer. And that's going to be the, the uh, um, subject of some of the, the talks this afternoon. Um, 
the true grit of the North East unfortunately means that we've had to um, change uh, the programme today um, because our, our colleagues from Gateshead haven't been able to make it th through the snow. In fact, I was uh, uh, emailing to yesterday saying I hope I can get through because it's been um, pretty bad up north. But we have a, a very able substitute in Lorraine Collins. Uh, Lorraine Collins comes from Uxbridge College and she's the, where she's the Director of uh, Employer Engagement. And what Lorraine would like to talk to us now for about 10 or 15 minutes is her perceptions of knowledge transfer um, from the pers perspective of somebody who's relatively new to the area. So Lorraine, would you like to join me up here? Thank you. 